Hi everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, today we'll be covering frequently asked questions in our business intelligence instant access service. Uh, we have uh, consultants on call uh, during work hours. Uh, this way you can have uh, power users and people that uh, may run into just certain issues that uh, may be fairly common but you may have just have little experience with uh, being that you're only working within your own environment. Uh, we have consultants that work on all kinds of environments and uh, you know we're constantly seeing new and um, you know old problems too uh, and we figured we'd have a three-part series uh, we'll cover our frequently asked questions if you have any questions or comments or anything like that please use the right hand side panel questions or chat and if you have questions for we're going to do three parts so we've got part two and part three so if you have any uh, larger questions that you may want to see uh, feel free to ask them there or just shoot us, shoot us a note uh, during or after the webinar uh, I always like to start off uh, our webinar with our mission statement just to let you know where we're coming from as a company uh, we are looking for long-term relationships uh, you know not quick one-off kind of deals and uh, we think that benefits you because we you know we know that uh, creating and finishing off work uh, in a timely fashion means that you can uh, expand as a company and uh, grow and that long term that is ultimately our best case scenario. Uh, we've been around since 1998. Uh, we've been doing business intelligence back before it was really called business intelligence. Uh, we specialize in business intelligence exclusively. Uh, anything that falls in that scope we definitely uh, understand and you know uh, can help you with this is going to kind of focus on our business intelligence instant access uh, that is a service that we launched last year and uh, we're pretty excited about if you have any questions about any of this uh, please feel free to let us know with that being said let me turn it over to Andrew Kreider and he is going to be uh, managing today's questions thanks Trent um, my name, as Trent said, is uh, Andrew Kreider. I'm a consultant here at uh, WCI. I assist a lot in creating uh, content and working with our instant access desk to provide uh, top uh, tier answers to our clients. <clears throat> uh, what we've done is that we've scoured over the past uh, year and a half worth of data concerning uh, what questions have been asked and what we've spent the most time on talking about. And so today we're going to talk about three different uh, SAP products, uh, Web Intelligence, and we're going to go over how to sort columns and how to create if statements and what you can do with those. We're then going to move into uh, Information Design Tool, which is the new universe designer for 4.0. We're going to talk about how to create a prompted parameter, uh, formerly known as a, uh, a prompt uh, filter in uh, 3.x. And then finally we're going to end on Dashboard Designer. We're going to talk about how to import data in through a query of the web service, and then how to view the data um, from that data source so that we can make sure that our dashboards are showing the right uh, uh, data. So uh, on your screen right now, you're going to be able to see a very standard web report based off of uh, the eFashion universe ship with 4.0. Uh, and you can see in the table, we have a, we'll have a number of different columns state, category, quantity, sold, and sales revenue. Now by default, web intelligence is going to sort by the left hand most column. However, there's a number of different times that you may not want to do this. You may want to be able to sort uh, by sales revenue to show the top ones at the top there, but you still want it to be visually displayed as this. So it's very simple to do this. We're going to go ahead and click on the table and right click on it. And we're going to go to sort, and we're going to manage sorts right here. And here you can add a sort. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and add the sort by sales revenue. We're going to make that ascend, uh, descending so that it shows the top ones at the top. Go ahead and click apply. Click OK. And so now we can see that the data is sorted by sales revenue. Now instead what I want to do is I want to sort it by state and then by state I want to show the highest sales revenue. So again, very simple. Go ahead and highlight, highlight one of the columns. Go into manage sorts. 
We'll go ahead and add our state here. And you'll notice that it falls below state revenue, below sales revenue. So what we're going to do is make that ascending. We're going to click Apply here. Click OK. Now you can see nothing changes. However, if we go into sort and we manage the sort again, and we raise it up by this, you can see it's going to sort by state and then by the sales revenue in each one of those states. So if we come down to Colorado, right, we see the same thing. Again, it's sorted by state and then by sales revenue. You can also do this by sections, but sometimes you want this row by row data to give out to your managers. And one of the other things that you can do is you can create an if statement in Web Intelligence. Um, I already created this one earlier, so let's go ahead and look at it. The if statement complex, which is available in the functions dialog down here, is very simple. If a, if a Boolean value, which is the sales revenue divided by quantity sold, greater than 150, then our true value, else, which is optional, our false value. So right now what this is going to say is it's going to, it's going to determine what our price per unit is. If it's greater than 150, it's going to say that it's high end, and if it's not, it's going to display it as not as high end. So again, we're going to place this here on the side of the table here. And we're going to see that even though our top three sellers are high end items with a high point of margin, most of our other money is coming from material that is not nearly as high end. And one of the other things that you may want to need to do at the report level is determine um, a number of series of uh, if statements to display a value. Uh, we usually call this a nested if. Um, because uh, the if expressions, like arithmetic expressions, are uh, evaluated from the inside out, right? Uh, we can nest a series of if state statements uh, to do our work. So in this state, what we're going to say is if we're in year 2005, that's the year of the sale. And it's in category of either boatwear or Bermudas, which never go out of style. We're going to call that as current model. And if it's not in that category, we're going to call it last year's model. And if it's not in the year 2005, we're going to show current model. So if year 2005, if this value is true, we do the interior of the statement, which is another in statement. Again, we evaluate the expression, we give the true value, or we give the false value, and if this value is false, we're going to return a current model. We're going to go ahead and drag this in here, just place it right here. Okay. And so now what we see is that, for example, t-shirts, right, we have two different lines right here. One that is last year's models, right, which we know is uh, in 2008 sales, 2005 sales. Or we have this year's model, which is current model, and this sort of in this value right here. This gives us a good idea how, of how to use conditional statements to kind of group our data differently, as well as showing different values um, or assigning it to a new person, um, and dynamically doing this. So if we sold you know, 500 more items here, and we and we lowered our sales revenue, then we would be able to do, be able to get a, perhaps another expression here. Or what we can do is we can also use a number of other functions to dynamically upgrade this item right here. But moving on, we're going to go ahead and move on to some of our client tools. Um, this is information design tool. Um, this is a new version of our semantic layer at SAP V04. Um, and as you can see, we have three different components here. We're going to be looking at the business layer right here, uh, which is replaces the folder structure available in Universe Designer. Now, prompts and filters at this level are now called parameters. And so what we can do is we can create a new parameter, and it's going to give us a prompt expression. So we can call this um, Ed's clients. 
we can enter our prompt right here. We can determine whether the string data type is coming back as either numeric, string, or date. Right? We can allow multiple values. Or we can keep last values. And then we can also provide a list of values, which we'll talk about in just a minute, or assign a default value to it. Now, those that use prompts in 3.x might notice that these are very similar options. Essentially, what SAP did to ease the creation of prompts and to reduce the amount of typos that often resulted in those at prompt statements was they essentially broke it down into a GUI interface so that you can do all of this right here. Now, if we associate a list of values right here, we have two options. We can either choose a business object list of value right? This would be a series of objects that you would create. Or a universe list of values, which is something that you can create on your own, right? And so we can just choose month right here. And this gives us, again, the type, which is, again, important to match to this right data type right here. So let's go ahead and pick year. We can do that as well. Now, a list of values is simply um, a list of values based on either business layer objects, a static list of values if you want to assign your own values for your own filtering and your own case statements at the universe layer, or we can do a list of values based on custom SQL. Right now we're going to go ahead and choose business objects layer. And you have two options here as well. You can either edit a query, and you can create a query so we can pull in um, edge clients or at a specific store, right, um, where um, for example, uh, the category uh, is equal to, right, um, you know, a, an object here, right? Actually, that's not what we want to do. We want to go ahead and um, do a constant here, right? Um, and only two pocket shirts, right? So if uh, the store sells two pocket shirts, then they're at one of Ed's clients. And then what you can do is you can also preview your tag, you preview your partial results, right? It's just 200 maximum rows by default. And then if you click OK here, we're going to go call this uh, Ed's clients. We can then go into here, associate a list of values. And so there you go. So that's a good way to go ahead and filter out your results there as well. Um, it is important to note that you can also do a list of values uh, based on a custom hierarchy. Uh, this is something that we can we'll discuss in our next webinar, how to create a custom hierarchy and all the utilizations of that. Final thing I want to talk about today is our uh, da dashboard designer product. We're going to talk about queries of web service as a data source. This is something created inside the business object experience. You can also use this with business intelligence web services generated by web intelligence. Again, another topic that we'll discuss the next time. Um, right here, what we can do is it's very simple. We can add, we can add any of these live data right here. We're just going to use a query as a web service here. You name the you name the connection. So this is our, our webinar connection. We go ahead and use a whistle import. This is a, a whistle that we use. We're going to import it, um, and then from there you can go ahead and choose your method. So if we look at one of these already established ones, you know there's a number of different uh, methods that are available. Uh, actually, the, the web service URL as well, you can either dictate it for somewhere, and then you can dictate the login, the password, so that your user doesn't have to enter that information, or if they do, you can do it that way. Uh, we also can show where the data is going, uh, everything from the table itself, from the cells there, to the headers, and then any footers that you may have. So if we go up here and we look at the cell right here, you can see that it's going to a specific place in our uh, our Excel sheet. So here we're saying it's being placed in B1 through E125. As you can see here, because the data is happening is being pulled 
on before the components are loaded, or whether you refresh it regardless, in the design mode, you're not going to see the data there as well. So one of the quick things that you may not be expecting is that the data may be wrong or it may not be what you expect. So you need to check the data there as well. So we're going to go ahead and preview this. Okay. And we can see that we're animating through a series of data right here. Uh, the years are changing and then our values are changing according to our legend. And we can also show it by individual city. Um, now if we pause this and we look at this, we may not expect for 2004 only to have five cities. So what we can do is we can go to File, Snapshot, and we can either take a snapshot as a PowerPoint slide, so we just want to export this out to share it in our next presentation or as an Outlook or as a flash object even. That's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is the underlying data. So I'll go ahead and use current Excel data. We're going to go ahead and call it um, AA Webinar. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then we're going to close out this preview and close out and uh, just keep that there. And then we're going to come up to start. We're going to go up to Microsoft Excel 2000. We're going to go ahead and open from our desktop AAA webinar, which we just opened. Expand that. And so now we can see by city, if we look back at our Excel docu Excelsius document, we don't have any data there as well. But we do have the data that is being returned from the last pull at whatever point we pulled it at, what that data was. And the same thing for our state data. And then more importantly, on our common, we can then see what values are being pushed into which fields here as well, which allows us to make sure that all the data is being displayed as quickly and as properly as possible. And then when you make a decision here, you can always go back here. Um, also, if you prefer to use this here, then you can make your modifications here to kind of test this out and then bring it back over to Excelsius and paste it into these cells. And that will allow you to kind of move forward. Um, or if you're just, you don't want to do any of the testing right now, you just want to deal with this data, make the visualizations work, and you don't want to run it every single time, you can always copy the data over into Excel, Excelsius, and then turn off your manual updates. So it never refreshes, and you can just work with the data that way. So that covers some of our big questions there that are responsible for our, a lot of our instant access time. In a couple weeks, we're going to go over some more complex things in information design tools, as well as an explorer. Um, so if you have any questions dictated on those two items, please feel free to give us a, a line, and uh, we'll make sure that we try to work those questions into our next session. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Trent. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, let me bring up our email addresses so that way everyone can uh, enter in questions they may have for the next webinar, uh, which will be June 4th at 1030 Central Standard Time. Uh, again, please get in any questions you may have for uh, that webinar in the next week or so. Um, any questions in general about our instant access program, business intelligence, um, or if you need help with a very specific problem, uh, please reach out to us. And I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone for joining today, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, June 4th will be our part two of this program, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact us. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.